So now that we've talked about making selections and modifying selections, let's talk about ways to make selections that don't use selection tools. And so a lot of the times when you say, oh, I know how to make selections, you think I will use a tool. I'll use the magic wand tool. I'll use the quick selection tool. I'll use the polygonal lasso tool. But there are other ways to select colors inside of Photoshop. I'm not even going to touch on all of them. Um, well, at least I'm not going to touch on them in this video. Um, but I'm just going to introduce two additional ways right now. But there are so many ways to select or to narrow down your selection to a color range um, or to a particular type of image or particular part of your image in Photoshop um, that you should start getting used to them because they have some cool uses. And so the first thing I want to talk about is the color range command, and then we'll talk about the focus area command, which in the newest version of Adobe uh, Photoshop CC, the one I'm currently using in September 2017, the focus area command has really, like, has been reformed to be light years more impressive than it has in the past. And so I'm kind of really excited to talk about that. And so the first option is the color range command. And if you go to the select menu, you can choose color range. And it selects all the color in your image, meaning a particular set of parameters. And so your parameters could be, I want to select all the red in the image, or all the yellow, or all the green. And you can choose that from the select drop down. You can even say, I want to mess with all the highlights, or all the midtones, or all the shadows. And then once it's selected, you can make changes to just that area. Um, you could even say, just give me all of the blues. Maybe somebody has blue eyes and there's no other blue in the image, and so you want to change the color of their eyes, so you select all the blues. Um, what I'm going to do today for the demo is to use the sample colors um, option from the drop down menu. And when you do that, you can click on your actual image in Photoshop and you can select the color that is applied. And the colors or the, the amount of white that you see in the little preview on the color range dialog box represent represents what will be selected. And so if I was to select OK right here, I'm not selecting a lot of the image. If you look at these two examples, I have the same dialog box that I just had, but now I have the sampled colors option selected, and I'm going to click on the image and select the color that I want. And in the second example, on the actual image, not in this dialog box, I clicked on the flower and it grabbed all of the main flower and part of these flowers back here. You can take the fuzzy slider and you can slide it left and right, left and right. As you slide it to the left, you're going to narrow down um, how, how much of the color can be selected. Like if I select red, will it select an orange red or a yellow red or things like that. And uh, if you slide it to the right, it's going to select more and more color. So if you slid the fuzziness slider all the way to the right, you would get lots of colors that are selected. And so what you want to do is you want to kind of slide this back and forth until you get the colors you want. Now it's not always possible. If we go and look at our image, I've got peaches and pinks and corals in my flowers. And so what you might want to do is you might want to just do this process a couple times depending on what your editing is doing. Or within this dialog box, you can change the dropper to be plus or minus. And so if you change it to the plus dropper, you can add to your selection and you can say, I want the peach and the coral and the pink. And this box will highlight and it will show you exactly what you're going to be selecting. When you select OK, you'll get a really funky looking selection marquee. It will almost look like you have these big kind of orbs that are definitely not selecting what you want. They're too hard, the edges are too hard, and, and they're, they're just going to make big blobs of color if you try to fill them with a different color. Um, but it's actually a way more complicated selection than you can see or you can interpret by looking at it in Photoshop. It is feathering edges and things like that so that when you were to edit this area, you're only editing the color that you wanted to have selected. Now, once you make that selection and you have it selected, you can do anything you want with it. You can apply a filter to it. You can desaturate it. You can change the color. You can play with the levels like I showed you in the previous videos. And so I'm just going to show you one option here. You can go and change the color of the image anywhere that you see hue and saturation. And so you could do an adjustment layer like I showed you for the levels adjustment layer. Or you can go to the image menu, choose adjustments, and then hue and saturation. And then you can mess around with the hue and saturation dialog box and you can mess with the sliders. And so with the selection made, if I slid this, the hue slider right and left, it would slide through all the different colors of the rainbow or the visible light spectrum, and then you can slide it back and forth until you get the color that you want. 
But sometimes if I have peach, pink, and coral flowers and I wanted to make them blue, like I'm going to make them in my example here, um, and I change it to blue and I have the same intensity and the same color, it almost would look too artificial. And I, I know I'm saying blue flowers. Um, all blue flowers will look artificial, but it will almost look like oversaturated just because the color is not natural. So sometimes you might also have to play around with the saturation and the lightness or the brightness of the image. And so in my example, the blue is just way too bright, and so I slid the saturation a little bit to the left until it made it look almost like natural flowers. I guess it's as natural as um, blue flowers can be. And so this was my first attempt here. I made a selection and then I thought I had all of the image selected and as I slid the slider to the left I eventually was able to set it to negative 153 and it made all my flowers blue but see how bright the blue is now it was brighter than that and so I slid the saturation slider to the left and it kind of takes color out of the image and it made it look a little bit more natural now there's one more thing to take a look at with this um, I still have peach and coral. I didn't get all of it. I missed some on this flower here at the bottom, at the bottoms underneath these flowers in the background. You don't have to cancel and do this all over again. You can repeat the process and you can just grab the colors that you missed. And so in my second attempt here, I did the process again and instead of selecting the flower, I selected the peach coral areas that I missed. And then I went back into that uh, hue saturation dialog box and I slid the slider to the right until I got a color that I felt filled in the flowers. The second alternate selection method is the focus area. And it, it is pretty cool in the sense that it allows you to really quickly grab your subject area. And so if you, um, if you have an image where your subject is in focus and your background is out of focus and you wanted to modify the, the, the background or the foreground, it doesn't matter. Um, in this case, you could quickly select the in-focus area and then if you wanted to adjust the out-of-focus area, you could then just inverse your selection. And so to select the focus area, you can choose select and focus area and this new and improved dialog box will appear in the newest version of Photoshop. It has some of the same features as the select and mask dialog box. You can even come down here and you can modify. You can launch and say, okay, I'm, I'm on track to figure out what I want to get, but I want to modify it now while I, while I have the chance. And you can launch that same select and mask dialog box that we talked about previously. Uh, you can change the view mode so you can see what part of the image is going to be selected and not. And so there's onion skin, there's on white, on black, and things like that. You can slide the in focus slider back and forth until you visually see that what you want to select is being selected. And then just like the Select and Mask dialog box, you can choose how to output your selection. And so I'm going to load it as a selection, but you can load it as different things like layer masks and things like that. And you can see in this example here that I want to select the ice cream cone. Uh, maybe I want the ice cream cone for a project, but I don't want the background. And so I noticed as soon as I looked at this, the hand and the ice cream cone are in focus and everything else is out of focus. And so my view mode, I'm going to leave it to, I just want to look at the selection because I can clearly see that I'm getting what I want. If I'm having trouble distinguishing the foreground and the background, I might want to change it to a different view option. I slid the in focus slider range back and forth until I got exactly what I wanted um, and I needed to have it at 2.25. Um, I still missed a couple areas though and so I'm highlighting these brushes here. These are quick selection brushes, just like we would find on the tools panel, and there's a plus and a minus. And so if I get too much, I can use the minus and I can get rid of some area. And if I accidentally erase too much, I can use the plus and I can come back and I can add to the selection. And then I chose to output it as a layer mask, even though I'm looking at it as a selection. I'm going to output it as a layer mask, and when I select OK, um, it will create um, a layer mask, which is attached to the layer, which blocks out the background. And now I could do some editing. So going back to this last slide on the selecting focus area dialog box, um, I also chose to soften the edge. And so when I'm looking at the selection, it doesn't really do anything to soften the edge. You can't tell. It's kind of like when you feather. You can't tell that it's been feathered. Um, but when I was to create the layer mask, what it does is it creates a soft edge around the outside of my shape, very similar to what we did manually by doing the contract and the feather. And then now that I have isolated this part of the image, the part that I want to keep, I can 
use it to create a design. Maybe I wanted to replace the background. And you can see in this example that I added what is called a gradient fill layer, which is another one of the adjustment layers that we'll talk about in Chapter 12. 